everything fundamental for the project preparation. My dear friends, you please remember a project present or a project preparation actually begins uh, with the identification of a research problem. So you have learned exactly what is a research problem, how it is derived, from where it is derived, and the processes to be adapted for deriving a research problem and so on. Theoretical background. I'm not talking anything about the theoretical aspects of uh, anything related to the research methodology. What are the sources of a research problem? as far as a research is concerned. The most important source of a research problem for a researcher is the published articles. The articles published by researchers in the field in which you are planning to do research. Say for example, if you are planning to do research in brand loyalty or brand image or in customer relationship management or with respect to uh, micro insurance, whatever be it, you have to identify the most popular research articles published by leading researchers in that particular field. You go through the articles, you will get more and more ideas about the problem you can undertake. Another important, <coughs> another important uh, source of research problem is reports of Apex institutions. They take the case of banking in India. The Apex institution is Reserve Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India is actually publishing a, a large number of uh, books, periodicals, monthly basis, quarterly basis, annual basis, and so on. Say, for example, Trends and progress of banking in India is an annual publication of Reserve Bank of India. If you are planning to do a research related to the core aspects of banking in India, you have to go through the recent Trends and Progress of Banking in India published by the RBI. Another publication of Reserve Bank of India is Reserve Bank of in, uh, RBI Bulletin. RBI Bulletin is a monthly publication which deals with all current issues of the banking and monetary aspects in India. While going through this report, you will get the exact current picture of banking as well as monetary aspects of uh, aspects in India. So you should be you should have a thorough understanding about the recent developments in banking. Are you able to hear me? Just a second, please.
Hello. Hello. I, are you able to hear me? Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. Oh, you can. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So the uh, reports of Reserve Bank of India, for example, and uh, we have reports of uh, National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development uh, dealing with the rural development in India. And we have various stock exchanges in India dealing with the stock market operations. So you remember, you have to go through the reports of the Apex institutions for getting a very close idea, very detailed idea about the, the current issues in uh, the areas in which you are actually trying to uh, uh, make a report. Another source of uh, uh, research problem is the newspaper reports. Remember, uh, newspaper reports, we, we researchers usually do not uh, apply the newspaper research re re report, paper reports as a very important uh, source of uh, uh, research problem. But leading newspapers, especially in uh, business and finance like economic times into business li line etc these newspapers are actually providing some detailed reports some research articles some emerging themes regarding uh, concurrent issues in india so you can go through such reports also for uh, um, identifying research problem another very very important uh, source is the books I'm not talking about the uh, university level books, but high end books published by leading researchers in the in your field uh, can guide you to identify some research, theoretical based research. And another important of, uh, source is the observations. Observation is a very important uh, source of uh, research. You, you try to identify the recent happenings. You try to identify what is happening in a supermarket, how people are choosing products, uh, what is the kind of loyalty people are uh, exhibiting, what are the behavioral uh, practices of the, research, uh, the, of the customers. These can actually give you some clues regarding the uh, uh, research. So, Research problem can be identified from published articles, reports of apex institutions, newspaper reports, books, observations, and so on. And uh, another very important issue we students face is regarding the title of the study. How to frame the title of a research study? What are the aspects to be considered by you for framing the research, uh, the title of your research study? So, I would like to tell you some important points to be considered by you uh, while framing the title of a study. The first and the most important problem or the issue or the point to be considered by you for while uh, framing your a study, a title of a study is that the title must convey the research problem. Always remember, whatever be your uh, title, that must convey, that must be able to convey the actual research problem because the research problem is the most important aspect. So you want to, you want to, you want to set the title in a way that it can convey what is the research problem. You remember another a very important uh, point is regarding the simplicity of the title. The title should be as far as possible. The title should be simple, uh, short, and understandable. And the most important, the most important 
uh, point to be remembered with respect to title of the study is that there should be a link between the title of study and the overall objectives of the study. Whenever looking, whenever looking at the title of the study, the person looking at the title of the study should be able to understand what should be the overall objective of your study. That's a very, very important aspect. Remember, this is very important thing. While framing title of the study, the title of the study should be made in such a way that the title can convey the original research problem and it should give some clues regarding the overall objective of your study. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I am I would like to speak about or tell you something about what are the contents of a project. You remember the participants may be doing an MCOM, some of them may be doing MPhil, some of them may be doing PhD, whatever it is. I would like to tell you, uh, tell every class, uh, depending upon the nature of the project you are actually going to do. First of all, I would like to tell you regarding uh, how an M MCOM level project is to be made. What are the contents required? Actually, uh, a normal PG level project consists of five different chapters. Before, before uh, speaking in detail about this, I would like to tell you that there is no hard and, there are no hard and fast rules regarding the number of chapters that can be incorporated in a project. How many chapters are required is not fixed anyway. This is not at all fixed. Remember, but usually a standard PG level project should have five different chapters. Chapters are, first one is the introductory chapter. We have to discuss each chapter in detail. Second chapter will be the review predictions. Whatever be the nature of the project, the first and the second chapter are compulsory. Review of literature. What is review of literature and how it is going to help a student or a researcher? Uh, I will def definitely tell you in detail. And the third one is the theoretical framework of the study you are undertaking. The fourth chapter will be analysis of data. And the fifth chapter will be findings, suggestions, and conclusions. This is the fundamental classification of uh, or chapterization of a, of a project at PG level. But when you go to an MPhil level project or PhD level project, you may see there may be more number of chapters, but the contents will be same. Contents will be same, but there may be more number of chapters. I would like to say exactly. Uh, uh, say, for example, if you are doing a project related to a particular a particular institution, say, for example, if you are evaluating the perform performance of uh, NABAR, in the rural development of India. Suppose you imagine you are doing a project on an MPhil student or a PhD student is doing a project on the role of NABAR in building or in the rural development in India. You are focusing on, on a particular institution. So naturally, you are to make a profile chapter that is the profile of about. Suppose you are studying about a particular bank or a particular group of institutions, then also you are to do an additional chapter called the profile about which organization actually you are studying. That is important. Otherwise, if you are doing general uh, study, you don't want uh, want to have you don't have a, a uh, such a chapter. Okay. In, in case of MPhil or PhD, the theoretical framework 
may be of different chapters. Depending upon the nature of the study, you may have different chapters for the theoretical framework. And at the same time, if you are uh, conducting two different surveys or two different types of analysis, then uh, the analysis part of the project actually will consist of different chapters. So for example, if you are analyzing secondary data for something and primary data for another thing, then there may be different chapters. Analysis chapter may be divided into two or three parts. That is uh, usually done in case of MPhil as well as PhD studies. And chapter number five definitely will be findings, suggestions, and conclusion. In between, if you are a PhD student and if you have a very good research model for your study, then you may have another chapter for your research model. Okay. The chapter may be uh, five, maybe six, maybe seven or eight, as the case may be, depending upon the nature. But for a PG student, we need only five different chapters, and the chapters include uh, chapter number one is introduction, chapter number two is review of literature, chapter number three is theoretical framework. Okay. Okay, we are going to deal with the contents of different chapters. I hope I will be speaking about the contents of two chapters today. The first chapter is introduction. As far as PG students are concerned, PG or MPhil students are concerned, you should be very careful about this because this is the most important chapter determining the quality of your work. From evaluator's point of view, this is a very important chapter. So you should know exactly what are the things that you put in in this chapter. The introduction chapter actually begins with an introduction. Whenever you see a project or whenever you think about a project, you think, what is to be written in introduction part? How much is to be written? Can I have some subheadings in between? So there should be clarity of idea. Introduction of the topic means you are to introduce your subject by taking one and a half page or two pages for a PG and MPhil project. And for a PhD project, it can go up to three or four pages. Don't go beyond. Remember, for a PG project, you need a maximum of two pages for introducing the topic. Now arise the question, sir. What is to be written there? So in order to have understanding about this, this we have to consider an example. Suppose you are trying to study about the role of MGNREG in Financial empowerment of women in a particular district. Once again, my topic, I would like to tell about an example. My topic is the role of MGNREG in the financial empowerment of women in a particular district. Say, for example, Patanandita or Kotem or Kodi Kod, as the case may be. If this is your topic, what is to be written in introduction part? So look at the theme. What is the theme? What is the main idea or the core concept in your study? It is the financial empowerment, first of all. Another is 
financial empowerment of women and what is what you are studying you are studying the role of mgnr so these are the three important aspects related to your study remember what are they first of all it is the financial empowerment then financial empowerment of women mm -hmm. and then a role of mg n r e g okay so in the introduction chapter or introduction part you are to say exactly what is this financial empowerment what is the role of financial empowerment in the uh, standard of life of people what is the role of women financial empowerment how it is contributing to the welfare of the uh, family and economy and at the end what role mgnr is actually expected to play so you are to make three or four paragraphs for introducing the topic okay like this you are to pray you should have a very clear understanding about what you are expected to uh, write in this part it's very important and another thing is the statement of the problem what is the problem you are studying normally majority of the projects are showing something which are not at all related to the real problem what problem you are trying to address must be written the quantity of the content is immaterial quantity is not a not an important factor here you are to tell what is the core idea uh, you are trying to study what is the pro what problem you are trying to resolve and the third one is the significance of the study why this study significance of the study it means why you are undertaking a study why why you feel this study as an important uh, researchable area okay you are to tell when you are studying about the financial empowerment of women role of mgnreg in financial empowerment of women you are to say why this study why you are taking up this study okay and then another aspect is the scope of the study this also is a very important thing you are to understand exactly what is to be written under scope scope is the a boundary within which you are studying what are the boundaries within which you are actually doing your study say for example if you are studying about the asset quality uh, of banking companies in india asset quality of banking companies in india naturally you are expected to uh, consider the data for a particular time period say for example if you are consider if you are studying uh, the if conducting the study by uh, analyzing the data for 10 years you are doing your study by utilizing the data for the last 10 years but you remember asset quality uh, is not a not an issue which lies within this particular 10 years you may be you can do this study for the last 20 years or so but you are confining your study to this particular 10 years so in the scope you are to take you have to say uh, the the present study is undertaken by considering the data during the last 10 years that is a scope that is a that is the uh, is geographical limit say for example another case you are uh, speaking about that trust on internet banking trust on internet banking 
it's an interesting study but you are expected to when, whenever you study about trust on internet banking you can uh, study or all over the globe or in asia only or in india or in kerala and so on and naturally you definitely will confine uh, your uh, study uh, you, uh, in a particular region sometimes you may be studying this in patanamthitta district only or in patanamthitta and cotton uh, district then you are to say that the geographical boundary of your study okay sometimes a study may be very vast involving a large number of factors large number of variables large number of aspects but you may be confining uh, the study to some extent only then you want to say so many aspects are there but my study is dealing only with these and these aspects that's why i told you that scope of the study actually is expected to uh, deal with the boundaries within which or the limits within which your study is being undertaken okay then uh, about objectives we will definitely discuss in detail about objectives then methodology also we will definitely uh, discuss in detail then we need hypothesis and last we need limitations so the different heads uh, coming under subheadings coming under the first uh, chapter will be introduction statement of the problem significance of the study scope of the study objectives of the study methodology hypothesis and then limitations then objectives methodology and hypothesis we will definitely uh, deal in detail so i would like to tell you something about limitations what are expected to be placed in limitations okay remember there is a connection between scope scope of the study and limitations you are confining the study within a particular boundary say for example i have told you that the uh, uh, take our first example that the role of mgri mg nreg in financial empowerment of women financial empowerment of women in kerala or in india you know that financial empowerment of women depends on a large number of factors definitely mg nreg is playing a big role in the financial empowerment of uh, economically backward communities economically backward communities because it is a job guarantee scheme so there are so many factors which are influ which can influence the financial uh, uh, financial uh, capability or financial empowerment of women but we are studying only the aspects related to mg and reg that means you are totally ignoring some vital uh, factors or variables which have a significant impact on the financial uh, capability or financial empowerment of women remember so you are leaving something you are not considering you are not properly studying some variables which are uh, having some sort of influence on the theme of the study so what to do you put it as a limitation while interpreting while interpreting the findings of my study you are to interpret the findings based on or considering these limitations okay remember while interpreting the results of money my study you should take into account or the reader should take into account the limitations that means take care some factors some variables something is not properly done okay that must be stated normally in many pg projects i have seen limitations as due to positive time due to lack of time uh, due to uh, uh, due to uh, uh, examinations 
due to non availability of uh, some, something, uh, my study suffers some limitation. That is actually not the uh, limitation of the study. You are expected to conduct a study which is possible within the time allotted to you. You don't want to take up a big study uh, for a three month period. You are to select a study which can be undertaken within the time allowed to you. Don't want to take up big studies, small studies, uh, which can be completed within the time period can be done. So limitations, you don't want to bother about the number of limitations. The real limitation must be uh, laid down. Say for example, whenever, whenever you are not applying a random sampling, you must state it. Say for example, whenever we are going for convenient sampling, or you are uh, collecting data in uh, Google Forms, you may not uh, ensure the representation of the population. That must be very clearly stated. If some of the variables, very important variables, are not properly studied, that must be must be stated. If you are limiting the uh, uh, time period of the data, that must be stated. Say, for example, I have told you about the asset study regarding asset quality. If you have considered data for only 20, 10 years, you have to say these findings are applicable only for the last 10 years. So that is enough. Okay, that's all about the introduction chapter. You uh, remember in introduction chapter, the, the statement of the problem is very important. You are to state exactly what is the research problem you are going to address? Okay, significance. I have already told you what are what uh, what are the important what what is the significance? What prompted you to take up the study? Sometimes it may be academic importance, sometimes practical, and so on. Okay, coming up to objectives. Normally. Whenever, uh, whenever we speak to students regarding projects, a question usually raised is how many objectives are required? Do we need five, six, seven, or so? You, my dear students, remember there is no universally accepted norm or standard for the number of objectives. Actually, there are research papers published in Journal of Finance, which I consider as the most important, most valuable journal related to finance in the, in the world. And many of the research papers published in uh, Journal of Finance got Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize in Economics. That is the significance of that journal, Journal of Finance. Only high-end top-class researchers uh, in economics and finance-related matters are publishing articles in this journal. Many of the articles published in these journals addresses only one objective. So if such a journal is publishing articles based on one objective. Why can't we make a project with one objective or two objectives? But the thing is that it should be the objective you set should be crisp, clear, and uh, should be researchable. And a question, another question is on what basis objectives of the study are being framed? What is the basis? How to write objectives? What are the things to be considered by me for writing the objectives? The first thing is that the objective should be directly related to the research problem stated. I have already told you about research problem. The research problem must be stated in a small paragraph. 
that is the description of the study you are going to undertake from the research problem you are to develop research questions from the research question you are to develop the objectives there should be a close linkage between objectives research problem and the title of the study remember always remember there should be a very close relationship between or linkage between the problem of the study that is a theme that should, that, is, that should be related to the, the title of the study and the objectives must be framed on the basis of the research problem so when a, when research when a research problem is cut into different parts and written in statement form it becomes objectives objectives are the research questions you are addressing for what you are trying to find an answer that is the objective for what you are trying to find an answer and another important thing is that uh, the research objective should be based on the research gap identified the research objective should be very closely related to the research gap i shall tell you exactly what is research gap and how the research gap can be identified and so on if you are planning to do a small work in a systematic and scientific way first of all you are to identify the research gap that means the area where a study has not been taken place properly you are to identify an area of study where the previous researchers have been done a good study that particular area of literature or area is technically known as the research gap you have to identify research gap on that basis you frame the research problem you are to make the title of the study and then you are to make the objectives so remember there is a process the first thing is that you identify the uh, research gap then you identify then you make research problem then you fix the title then you fix the objectives then your study will be in a systematic manner and remember always remember the uh, objective you place should deserve a real research if a if a particular objective is fixed which can be answered by you even without conducting a survey or even without analyzing data what is the need of that objective that is my question if an objective is objective fixed by you can be the uh, can be identified or can be proved without conducting a survey or without analyzing the data that objective is not researchable you don't want to conduct research your logical reasoning is enough so you should be very careful about fixing the objectives no, the number is not fixed you can have a project with the two or three objectives while fixing the objective you look at the research problem and the title on that basis you are you, your objective should be somewhat connected with Uh, the your research uh, problem as well as the uh, uh, title okay now we have to see hypothesis as far as hypothesis is concerned again the same question is raised that how many hypotheses are required in a project what is the basis of forming hypothesis really what is the purpose of the testing of hypothesis and how to test it the answer to the last question how to test it we have already learned in our class two in quantitative techniques you have studied some statistical tools that can be 
used for testing uh, hypothesis. Okay, that I am not talking at present. The question is, how many? How many uh, hypotheses? <laughs> Stop the audio, please. Please stop the audio. Okay, how many object, how many hypotheses are there? There is no hard and fast rules. You always remember, you don't want to put too many hypotheses without considering your objectives. The objective, the hypothesis should be very closely related to your objective. The very purpose of a hypothesis is to establish your objective or your findings. Your findings related to your objective. You want to establish or you want to make sure that the findings with respect to a particular objective is true. For that purpose, we are testing a hypothesis. So unnecessarily don't put hypothesis. We can fix n number of hypotheses, but don't want to go for too many. Okay. And what is the basis of framing hypothesis? The basis is objective. Suppose if you have an objective like our study, our previous study example is regarding financial role of MG and RNG in the financial uh, empowerment of rural women. Suppose you are taking a sample of Patanandita and Kotem district. You know that the Panjayat authorities are playing a very important role in uh, the smooth conduct of MGNRG operations in the village level or panchayat level. So the so you want you you are a, an objective for your study maybe the uh, local the role of local self help uh, uh, the ro role of self uh, local government governments self governments in the uh, conduct of the organization. You may be studying about that. You can fix a, a particular an objective like that. And you can have a, an objective like the uh, socio demographic, the influence of socio demographic uh, variables or socio demographic factors on the financial empowerment of people, like education or the income level of the uh, family from which the women are coming, the education level of the uh, spouses of these women, and so on. So you, if this is a particular objective, you can fix a uh, hypothesis based on that. And what is the purpose of uh, testing a hypothesis? You should have a very clear understanding about that. You remember, a large number of the study or majority, large majority of the studies conducted by us are adopting sampling, sampling technique is being adopted. That means you are selecting uh, 100 or 200 or 400 or 500 samples from the population. The results of your analysis actually shows what you have seen among the sample. Okay, so for example, if you are trying to quantify the level of financial empowerment of women on a five-point scale, the minimum score will be zero and the maximum score will be five. Level of financial empowerment of women is quantified by using some scales uh, on a five-point scale. So the minimum score is zero or sometimes it may be one and the maximum may be but you want to measure the financial uh, uh, level of financial empowerment. 
Suppose you have measured the level of financial empowerment and you found the average based on different demographic classification. So for example, you found that the level of financial empowerment of women having only school education, having only school education is 3.25. And the level of financial empowerment of women having uh, higher secondary level education is 3.45. One is 3.25 and other is 3.45. By looking at this, you can say that people having comparatively better education have better financial empowerment. Am I right? In case of people having school education only, the score was, average score was 3.25. And in case of women with the higher secondary education, the score was 3.45. So slightly, uh, uh, the women with the higher secondary education have better financial empowerment. These scores are applicable only for the sample uh, from where you have, you have collected data. But you have collected data for what purpose? You want to, you want to speak about the population. You want to find something about the population based on the sample. So the data available with you is applicable only for sample. You want to establish that similar uh, features are applicable in population also. The process adopted by you for generalizing the findings of the sampling study is technically known as testing of hypothesis. Okay, remember the process adopted by you for generalizing or establishing that the findings from the study is applicable in population also so that you can generalize whatever you found in this sampling study can be generalized only after testing hypothesis that is the purpose okay okay we are uh, moving on to the uh, next part Okay. The slide is actually not properly functioning.
Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Hello. Sir. It is actually not uh, functioning. I'm uh, trying to resolve it. Uh, wait for a minute. Wait for a minute. Okay. Slide is not would like to begin another part yeah, that is regarding yeah. regarding the review of literature i would like to speak about another area which is review of a literature uh, i have already told you that uh, you are to identify the research gap so the question is how to find research gap the only one thing is to have a proper review of literature. I would like to tell you what is the purpose of review of literature? What type of reading is required? What kind of literature is to be reviewed by? What kind of literature is reviewed by? The basic purpose of review literature is to identify the research gap. And in detail, what are the purposes I will uh, tell you uh, during the progress of this presentation. First of all, I would like to tell you about the kind of literature to be reviewed. The kind of literature to be reviewed actually depends on the nature of the study the purpose for which you are uh, preparing the project, the course for which you are preparing the project, and so on. But whatever be the course for which you are doing the uh, project, in a digital era, a person doing a PG project or an MP project or a PhD project can review similar type of literature because many of the literature many of the our works are now available almost free of cost especially you remember many big libraries have opened their uh, digital gateways for researchers can freely access the research materials you remember you have to read my, it is my advice to read the top class literature or to review the top class literature in the area in which you are to do work. Now, normally arise a question. Uh, how can I identify top class research papers or top class literature? You remember, whenever you are doing a project you definitely will come to uh, or come in contact with some research papers you look at the uh, references part if you go through the references part of some of good articles you definitely find some names some big names repetitively used by almost all others. You search them where they are actually working, what kind of papers they are uh, published, how many papers they are published, in what are journals they are actually publishing. While going through, you will get an idea about the quality of the uh, person who wrote the book or wrote the article. In that way, you try to identify some the articles or the books written by some good people in your area. You try to read that. You always remember, while beginning review of literature, you will face a lot of difficulties. Definitely, you have to face a lot of difficulties because 
the language in which they are writing, the technical terms they are using may not be known to you. So you take a lot of pain to complete reading uh, high quality research articles. And you remember the type of reading you require as a beginner. You may be able to read the first part of a standard article, may be able to understand the first part of the article, maybe introduction, a review of literature, theoretical part that may be easily understandable to you sometimes. Sometimes that may also be very difficult. The first part of the article you can read very carefully, try to understand what is the concept, what they are speaking, how the methodology uh, is being designed, uh, what, what they are actually planning to do, or that is the objective of their study, or these can be understood by you. But while going to another part, technically known as discussion, in many uh, leading journals, there is a section called discussion in each article. Discussion part is actually the findings part. That is, uh, they are actually discussing or explaining what they found. They may be using complicated mathematical or statistical tools for interpreting the findings that you may not be able to understand properly. Even if you are a PhD scholar or an MPhil scholar, you may not be able to understand completely what they are uh, discussing in that particular part. You first, during the first phase of your reading, you concentrate on the first part of the article, like the introduction, uh, real literature, theoretical aspects, and so on. Discussion part, you uh, in the first reading, you 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 try to understand what you know. Then you come to the conclusion part, what they are written in conclusion. The conclusion part will definitely tell you about uh, what they actually found in nutshell, what they actually found. So that kind of uh, reading is to be applied by the beginner. Then after completing a uh, first one reading, you take again and again the same articles, read more and more. You will get better insights in the area in which you are actually working. A number of reading, a repeated reading is essential for the proper understanding of a good quality uh, research article. I have read more than 50 times some articles to understand properly what the authors are established or what the authors are saying. So that is very important. And the, what is the significance of uh, your, uh, the review of literature that I will explain uh, in subsequent slides? While doing, uh, uh, what is the, uh, now I would like to speak about or tell you about what is actually the outcome of the review of literature. What is the outcome? What you expect from uh, the uh, review of literature? First of all, you remember, while going through uh, the different works done by different people, you have a very good understanding about the theoretical aspects in the area in which uh, they have done work. The theoretical aspects may be very clear to you. After reading some articles, the theoretical aspects or dealing with or related to your study will be very clear. So, you will have a good idea about the research problem in which you are uh, doing work. You remember, you will be familiar with the type of research work you are expected to do. Research works can be of different types. Since you, you have already read a number of articles, 
you will be able to understand exactly what is the type of research work you can do you have a good understanding about the theoretical aspects you have good understanding about the methodological aspects you are now familiar with the methodology adopted by great researchers because while uh, reading a, a number of articles all these articles will tell you how, what is the methodology they have adopted what are the different different methodologies for different purposes so you have a good understanding about different methodologies adopted by great researchers so you have good understanding about uh, the theoretical aspects you have a good understanding about the historical background of the study of the area in which you are conducting the research you are familiar with the type of research done by similar research or great researchers in your area you know exactly what is the methodology that uh, you can adopt okay Okay, then after conducting a, a review of literature, a proper review of literature, you will be in a position to understand the type of research study you are expected to undertake. You have a very good theoretical understanding of this subject. You know the methodology to be adopted. You now know the tools you are expected to un, uh, use. Now, as a researcher, you are able to come up with the expected linkages between the variables. So you, while going through the study, you have found a number of variables related to your area of work. You have good understanding about the theory. You have good understanding about the methodology to be adopted. You have good understanding about the best practices of the researchers. So uh, you are now able to come up with the expected interlinkages uh, between the variables. So at the end, at the end, you remember, my dear friends, you remember, you are to come up with a research model you are to come up with a research model uh, in the area in which you are working. So you remember what you have learned through the review of literature. You got good theoretical understanding. You are familiar with the leading researchers in this area. You are familiar with the leading institutions uh, uh, dealing with your area of work. You have good understanding about the methodology you have very good understanding about the uh, real research problem so you have identified the research gap you have framed your research uh, problem you have framed your research title you have now well defined objectives you have well defined objectives so you can come up with a research model i would like to show before you a research model i proposed for a particular study you look at it what this picture actually says you should be able to uh, come up with a research model uh, maybe like this you may be able to present it another way so different researchers are uh, using different different methodologies for uh, uh, showing the research model what i uh, suggest is uh, for a study like this say for example i would like to tell you exactly what study i am actually proposing i am studying about uh, relationship strength in banking companies that is customer relationship strength that is the core area of the study the left side of the uh, relationship strength circle shows some variables or some components like shared value personalized the communication then empathy and another item is trust. You remember what I meant here is trust is an important factor that influences the relationship strength. 
customer relationship strength is what i propose is customer relationship strength in a banking company is being influenced by trust first of all and the trust is being influenced by shared value personalized communication and uh, empathy okay trust is being influenced by shared value personalized communication and empathy and this shared value can also influence the relationship strength let's look at the arrow shared value personalized communication and empathy can influence trust trust can influence relationship strength and the shared value also can influence the relationship strength so i have an objective customer relationship strength is being influenced by trust and shared value one my first hypothesis is customer relationship strength is being influenced by trust and shared value another objective is trust customer trust in banking or banking business is being influenced by shared value personalized communication and empathy and look at the right side of the relationship strength there are three circles representing word of mouth communication repurchase intentions that shows that the relationship strength customer relationship strength in banking companies will result in word of mouth positive word of mouth customer commitment and trusted cust purchase intentions that means what that means better relationship better customer relationship will result in good word of mouth from the part of the customers word of mouth means the opinion of the customers positive and negative opinion of the customers regarding the service provider here the service provider is the bank i am i am studying the relationship between i say that a uh, word of mouth is an outcome of relationship strength that means that means relationship strength can positively influence word of mouth that is my hypothesis okay so and at the same time i feel that relationship strength can positively influence customer commitment and also this relationship strength can influence repurchase intentions of the customers suppose what is this repurchase intentions say for example if you have uh, a home loan with a particular bank a savings bank account is also there you have a home loan account with a particular bank suppose if you are planning to purchase a motor car the car worth rupees 15 lakh 15 15 lakh you have with you rupees 5 lakh you need 10 more lakhs you want to borrow 10 lakh or take a car loan uh, of rupees 10 lakh then there will be a large number of options before you you can straight away go to the uh, car dealer they will arrange loan you can go to any bank nearby or you can go to the bank where you have a home loan and a savings bank account the intention to intention regarding the regarding uh, repurchase of similar or related or not related products from the same service provider or from the same vendor is technically known as repurchase behavior suppose if you decide to go to the same bank uh, for the uh, car loan there is a positive repurchase intention from your bank what what may be what may what may in, what influence you what influence you to uh, take such a decision that is a question that may be the better customer relationship better relationship with uh, uh, with that particular bank so i feel that better customer relationship strength will result in positive word of mouth that means customers having higher customer higher relationship strength or better relationship strength will speak only positive about the bank customers having better relationship strength uh, will be more committed to the bank customers having better relationship will 
purchase similar products in future from the same bank so that is the kind of uh, expectation so that's my study is related to relationships plan so i have uh, i i i uh, my objective is to identify the factors influencing relationships plan from the review of literature i found that trust shared value personalized communication and empathy can influence the relationship plan but a detailed review found that the trust is being influenced by shared value personalized communication and empathy so uh, and at the same time shared value can also influence relationship plan so that i have i have made an objective a research model like this so if you are doing a standard research especially at the uh in field or phd level you should be able to come up with a research model uh, diagrammatically or theoretically sometimes diagrammatic presentation of a research model may not be possible in some cases but in many cases it is possible so if possible you can do this the problem can be easily conveyed okay that's all about the uh, about my today's presentation now it is the time to raise some queries uh, before that before winding my uh, winding up the session once again i would like to uh, congratulate and uh, thank the department of commerce dia college tripura uh, principal uh, dr vijay george i head of the department abisa and i i am i'm so thankful to all the participants of this program uh, you remember we will have one more session in uh, related to this especially related to how to construct a an in, a research instrument that is a questionnaire and how uh, it, it can be the reliability and validity of the instrument can be evaluated technical aspects that uh, the the next session will uh, deal with such areas so i would like to wind up if there are some queries i will be very happy to answer if i if it is known to me so once again thanks to all of you dear participants if you have got any questions to ask uh, uh, dr anthony joseph you, have, you can ask now if you have got any doubts you can uh, clear your doubts now നിങ്ങൾക്ക് മലയാളത്തിൽ ചോദ്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ ചോദിക്കാൻ ഒരു കുഴപ്പമില്ല ധൈര്യം ചോദിക്കാം ഇഫ് യു വോണ്ട് യു ക്യാൻ ടൈപ്പ് യുവർ ക്വസ്റ്റൻസ് ഇൻ ദ ചാറ്റ് ബോക്സ് ഓൾസോ any questions or doubts please dear participants oh sir so i think okay okay uh, now is the time i am neetu josh uh, here from the department of uh, commerce of uh, bm college surtikat so what's uh, not enough to express our gratitude for you uh you it was a very simple and uh, most effective session uh, that was handled by you i'm sure that it's uh, it shall be really useful and helpful for the students in bringing out a quality project uh, with the right content in a systematic manner thank you so much sir for sparing your time for the pgn research department of commerce of bm college the department okay. as well as the participants <laughs> shall cherish the awesome session handled by you for different segment of beneficiaries and uh, we are profoundly indebted to you sir uh, for the same uh, thank you thank you so much sir okay thank you thank you thank okay. you for the good words okay and uh, thank you dear participants uh, hope to see you uh, in the next session that is scheduled for 17th july at 11:30 am by uh dr anthony joseph sir itself uh, you should uh, join and uh, uh, 
uh, enjoy and uh, exploit uh, whatever uh, share is, uh, is whatever is being shared by sir. Uh, uh, thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. Once again. Okay. Thank you. Okay.